Hey guys, how you doing? I wanted to show you guys this clip right quick with the new Ninetales, in which I play her phenomenally, to be honest with you. Like, I don't play super aggressive. I play as a support, if that makes any sense. I'm not the carry on my team in this position. Lucario would be. That's how I look at it. So I play as a supportive carry, if that makes sense. I want to protect him at all costs. This Ninetales right here was actually spot on. Like, I didn't overstep my boundaries. This is the way I want to play her. I mean, hopefully, a lot of other people realize that you are a CC machine. Like, you do so much crowd control, it's not even funny. And as long as you play like that, dude, and you play with a team, you can do so much crazy stuff. But hey, man, it's been Pause Plays, and I'll catch you guys in, uh, in this next video. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Have a good one. Hey, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another Pokemon Unite video featuring Ninetales, by the way. I am so excited to show you guys the dominant force of Ninetales. When played, I want to say, almost perfectly. I make I make some mistakes, but I think that's me relying more so on my team. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in a position where we can actually do something, and they don't follow through, if that makes any sense. But, again, at the end of the day, man, this Ninetales is so good. I'm not going to lie, it is so good. I get to actually go to bot lane with the Cramorant, and I was super excited for this right here. Like, he does so much crowd control, I do so much crowd control. I mean, what are they supposed to do in this scenario? Obviously, we play against, I always forget this Puffball's name, but the healer that heals all damage, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Like, she just does shield after shield after shield. She got nerfed, but not nerfed good enough. This right here, I was figuring, like, we could go ahead and kill this guy. Which we did, but I think we could have got double kill if he focused before he started taking down that Dino. But, hey, what do I know, man? What do I know? Now, sadly enough, a lot of people play Ninetales as a as a carry. You know what I mean? Like, they're just here after, go after kill, after kill, after kill. And you can still play like that. Yeah, you can play however you want, obviously, but at the end of the day, like when you play certain Pokemon, certain Pokemon are good for certain things. Like when I play Ninetales, I play super aggressive almost every game. But it's not an aggressive sense as in gotta go in, gotta go in. It's not like that, no. I think people that play in that mindset, doesn't matter what Pokemon you're playing, doesn't matter what champion you're playing, people in that mindset, they really suffer when it comes to higher ranks. Unless you know your character specifically and how you know like you know when your power spikes are, you know how much damage you can deal at any given window. And trust me, there are champions in league that, you know, we, we know. Like we can play we can play Fizz, for example, if you guys aren't aware what that uh, what he is. He's a fish who has a, a shark ability that you can instantly instantly give somebody at level six as soon as you get your ultimate in lane. I mean, those opportunities, when you hit that power spike, you know when to go in. So when you're sitting here playing Machamp, right, and you get your ultimate, a fresh Machamp, fresh getting ultimate, you can pretty much insta-cap anybody you want to by running in and just doing your ult. I think this position here, he was out of position trying to go and get more farm when they were just running in, because again, they have a Machamp, you can't stop him when he's unstoppable, so you kind of got to move out of the way. But he was too focused on trying to get the Adino here and got himself killed for it. But he makes up for it a little bit later. I don't see too many good Cramorant alts, which is very unfortunate. But he does do some decent whirlpools and, you know, some surfs. But again, my nine tails is super aggressive, and that's the way we gotta play her. But it's more so for support. Think of her as you're playing a support Pokemon, but not necessarily an actual support, if you know what I mean. Like there are other carries in my game currently that we have a Cinderance and a Greninja, right? We both know they're late game monsters. And once they get their full Evos, you as Ninetales is, is absolutely phenomenal. And this fight here took majority of the game just to get this first Treadnought. And this was all about positioning and paying attention to where my carries were. This whole time, my Greninja tried to stay behind my Snorlax and myself. I tried to stay behind my Snorlax and support my, my carries. And these are how we actually win most of these trades, win most of these fights. I don't want to say it's just all because of myself and Snorlax, because Snorlax actually played very, very well. 
surprisingly enough. But at the same time, the amount of crowd control that him and I provided for our carries to actually deal damage was really, really good. Also, for those of you that don't know, please, please take Aura Veil. Stop taking Avalanche. Avalanche just really messes you up and messes your team up with the walls. It really does. Oroville gives your team so much more, how you say, like, space and attack boosts. That overstepped my welcome, and I was also kind of triggered because that kick was, like, far. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. They actually do get me in that one, and then I do get the comeback, and I get my, uh, my, get my Unite move here. And the tables just turn. And by the way, I am running Buddy Barrier, Focus Band, and wise specs on my nine tails buddy barrier always no matter what i don't care if you're rank one or you know a beginner to a master rank you always bring buddy barrier with nine tails you want that tankiness that aspect you don't want like i said you don't want to sit here and come into a game thinking you're just going to carry it no you have to carry your carries if that makes any sense that's the way i look at it when i play her like i said this fight we were here pretty much all games just for this first treadmill and sometimes this happens in games, but this also shows you the importance of Dreadnought. Everybody wants this Dreadnought. This right here was the perfect example here. I ended up getting two targets in my ultimate while making the other two low enough to want to run away before they all even popped. So they have to go back and heal. If they want to come back in, they have to force their way back into this because we have the choke right now. Which thankfully, we do get the Dreadnought, right? And now everyone starts dispersing because there's no other objective down here. But, with Dreadnought taken here, and everyone in the bot lane, we end up getting this cap as well. Like, it was just no big deal. The team played really, really well. And the position of Ninetales was phenomenal. Like, there were some times where I got kicked in the face, I overstepped a little bit. And I don't know why I did it. I think it was obviously, you know, the engagement, you know, the, the fun factor of what was actually going on. There's a lot of stuff happening there. And I played a little bit too reckless. But we were able to carry it. This Machoke really just went in every single time. Like, there was no, like, I don't know if I can kill him. I'm going to go for it. Like, every time. You could argue his healer really didn't follow through with him. But he wasn't going to be able to kill either one of us on that, on our pad here. Especially him not being my champ yet, a little under leveled. But it's fine. I mean, eh, know your limits, I suppose. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to power spikes. I'm being level 11, he's almost level 9. 9 out of 10, he's not going to be able to beat me in that scenario. Even Cramorant in that scenario, if Cramorant plays right. It is close, but at the same time, think about what's spawning here. Zapdos, right? She's getting ready to spawn down. So we're going to have an issue. Pikachu got himself in a scenario where he got frozen and crowd controlled by both of us. And I'm just like, let me go ahead and pop it all. I wanted to catch the, I forgot, like I said, Eldegross. I wanted to catch Eldegross in the ulti. Just to get her out of the fight and hopefully she popped an ult before Zapdos. Which she did, actually. Like I said, this Machamp just runs straight in, man. Doesn't even care, nothing. Just goes straight in for it. He doesn't deal enough damage to one burst me, because due to himself being under leveled, give or take. This fight was very, very good, but at the same time, it was pretty bad, just the way it happened. Greninja's not coming down here to the Dreadnought, instead he's trying to get more kills, and at that point, we didn't actually need the kills. We didn't need the Dreadnought either, but the EXP would still be nice to give us the, the lead still, when it came to experience. That one dazzling gleam in that fight right there, that one burst, gave them enough CC. Just that one. And that's, sometimes that's really all you need. Because Cinderance just comes down and gets to clean up. Snorlax is not going to be able to do enough damage to kill him, obviously. But at the same time, he's not going to be able to reach Eldegross just because of that wall. But we gave them a window to actually get in there and move and do their DPS. So guess what? Right now we are what ahead, currently in points right now. It's a close battle, but we are we are actually ahead in points right now. And the difference is, we don't need Zapdos. 
just just stop. You know what I mean? Like right now we could just go defend. We don't need Zapdos. And it's interesting because some of our teammates, you know, they do realize this. This doesn't happen every game. It really doesn't. We get to those games where everyone's all like, gotta do Zapdos, gotta rush Zapdos, blah, blah, blah. And then we end up losing. Now, Cinderance down there does give them the advantage, right? Which is unfortunate. But Snorlax also sees this right now. Which, A plus for this guy. Like, thank you for doing map awareness. He goes down there, he caps. He realizes that if he caps his base here, he automatically just takes it. We have enough points to take it. Which is why he did it. And I was just, I was rooting for him the whole entire time because he's the only Pokemon on our team that was just like, let's go do this. I was low at the time. So, I mean, might as well let him go. Especially, he had more points than me. Can't speak. This Cinderance here was being a silly goose. Like, regardless, he's level 14. I do too much burst in the early game here with my CC and crowd control that he wasn't going to be able to kill me unless he had ulti. So I wasn't worried about it. I just popped an ult here just just because. I mean, the game is over here. Pikachu probably is going to kill me with Electro Ball, but at the end of the day, it's just like, we already won the game just because we played defensively as Aptos instead of offensively. But man, if you sit down and play a Pokemon and enjoy that Pokemon, stick with it. Learn the ins and outs. Learn your burst windows. And you can actually see how much effectiveness you can bring to a team. But man, this was a really, really good game. A really good showcase for Ninetales and the amount of work that she can actually do when you play her as a kind of a supportive role. But hey man, this has been Paul's Plays. I'll get, I will catch you guys in the next Pokemon Unite video. Hopefully everyone has a good rest of your day, man. I'm out. This is how much damage you can deal with Ninetales, guys. Almost 88k just by playing a supportive position instead of and like aggressive running in head first. But hey, man, hopefully you guys enjoyed the new Pokemon Unite video featuring Nine Sales, man. This has been Paul's Plays. There's a lot of Pokemon content to come. Stay tuned. Please leave a like, subscribe, YouTube stuff. Catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.